In this video, I'm going to show you how you can finally trust again. Even if every time you put yourself out there or you begin to trust, you feel like there's some form of betrayal, there's some form of letdown, there's a constant reflection that says that I can't trust, what's the point? And then normally there's some form of attachment to control or going inwards and secluding yourself off from the rest of the world. I'm gonna show you how to get to the core of what this is really about. I'm gonna show you how to uh, transform that energy from the inside out so that you can finally trust not only other people, but trust yourself in a very powerful way. Now let me first off just be vulnerable and honest with this. This last year, this is something that I have been going through my own transformation with where I look at how I trust myself, also just how I am in reality, just in general, because I think there's certain aspects in my life where in the past something has happened and I decided that it wasn't safe, so I resorted to trying to control my environment, to control my business, to control uh, aspects of my life because there's fear that came with being vulnerable or fear that came from trusting the unknown even. So I wanna share with you a little bit of how that's played out, but also how to get to the deeper core if you ever have been betrayed or you ever had something that happened to you that kind of like reaffirmed that belief that there's, it's not worth trusting, it's not worth putting yourself out there in certain ways. So first off, this is also inspired because I was doing a live session yesterday and somebody, I was coaching somebody through this and it was very interesting. This person came on and was explaining how when they were three years old, um, they remember being beat with a belt. And that from that moment on, she was like, I, I, can, I can't trust. How can I trust when I don't know what love is? How can I trust when uh, the only masculine connection I've had in my life is somebody that would beat me when I was younger, when I was growing up. And what was very interesting to find out about this person was that even though they had all of this painful experience growing up with that kind of trauma or that kind of abuse, they had, fa they had a very deep and rich spiritual connection in their life with themselves. They had a very deep spiritual connection with something larger than, than themselves. And one of the breakthroughs for this person was like them realizing that even though maybe in the past their parents, they didn't feel they could trust them, they found a connection to something greater than what they experienced in their childhood that allowed them to feel even more depth and even more safe. And that greater was, this person was talking about how they feel so connected to Mother Earth, how grounding themselves and how being in nature is so rewarding. And how one question I asked her was, you know, I could tell she had a connection to a higher power. And I said, has God ever let you down? And she thought about it for a minute and she said, no. So while sometimes we might have very high expectations of other people, we can realize that at the deeper core as kids, I believe that a lot of times the way we relate to our parents is we believe growing up in a way that they are a representation of God. <laughs> of the universe. And because that's the initial relationship we have when we're young. And what happens is many people, I believe, that have specifically maybe some form of masculine trauma may have had a belief or some type of uh, fear that says, I can't trust. And what ends up stemming from this belief of I can't trust or the doubt in being able to trust or to feel safe is what happens. There's, there's a resort to this safety mechanism of going inwards and not trusting anymore, of staying inside of the box. And when you realize that there's some form of resentment that there may be towards the masculine or even, even towards the feminine as well, or towards the parents as well, I think a lot of times that keeps the energy active inside of yourself, which then attracts experiences to you that reflect back that energy pattern. So for example, if you believe that all women or all men are manipulative, and that's the deeper core belief, and even deep down you may say, well, this isn't good. I don't like this. But deep down, there may be 
a sense of safety that comes with that familiar energy because growing up, maybe mom or dad was manipulative and there's something about that that feels safe. So then what happens is you attract people into your life that are simply reflecting back that unconscious energy. And even recently in my own life, I've gone through a big transformation over the last like six months to a year because I had an experience in my life where there was a feeling of betrayal. There was a feeling of uh, why did something happen? There was a, a big amount of anger that that evoked inside of me. And what I got to look at was that there was a story that I was in a way very tied to. I was tied to a story that this thing happened, it shouldn't have happened. And that betrayal wound that came up was also a form of an abandonment wound. And the way that I healed through that was actually an Eckhart Tolle video, an Eckhart Tolle video where I was looking at forgiveness and I realized, yes, this thing happened, but I need to forgive this person. I need to also forgive myself. I think there's a lot of blame that came from this situation. And what I had to look at was realize that the forgiveness, forgiving is when you let go of the position, you let go of the blame. That's really what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is when you stop blaming. You stop blaming someone else and you stop being tied to the story. And the Eckhart Tolle video I watched really clarified this for me in a very powerful way because at the deepest core, what he said was that forgiveness is really not so much about like saying like, I forgive you because I forgive you means you did something wrong to me. It like reinforces that natural wrongdoing. And the way and the thing that really helped me heal from this was understanding that it was a reflection of a certain level of unconsciousness. So this is what Eckhart Tolle said in the video. It's unconsciousness and the lack of presence that evokes certain situations in our life. So for example, if your mom and dad were abusive growing up or were emotionally or physically abandoning you growing up, you can say, well, they did this to me, but from the level of consciousness they were at, that was just their natural state. It may have not been intentional or maybe it was intentional, but regardless, it was an act of unconsciousness because somebody that is consciously in their heart or in their own energy would not harm somebody else. People are always doing the best they can with the level of consciousness they're at. When I look at my past with my ex-stepmom, for example, and how angry and manipulative she was, I could say, she did this to me, I can't trust women, and then I would attract it into my life after my ex-stepmom left when I was 15. I attracted people that would reflect back that form of manipulation. I always had to fight for my own freedom. I had managers that were like this. There was always someone in my life that reflected back this energy pattern until I forgave her. And I realized the forgiveness came because I realized she was doing the best she could with the level of consciousness she was at. Her dad was abusive to her and she was playing out that pattern. Doesn't make it right, but it did help me understand it more. Now, in a similar way, when I look at what happened earlier this last year where I went through a big transformation when it came to this betrayal energy, I realized that the person that this happened with, it stemmed from a certain level of unconsciousness of energy that may have been under the surface that they weren't aware of. Doesn't necessarily make it right, but it does help me understand and it does help me realize that it was unconsciousness that did it, not necessarily her. Because you see, what Eckhart Tolle was talking about is when you get into the identity of you did this to me, at the deepest core, we are the I am presence. The egos many times can be at a certain level unconscious. So we have egos that are unconscious that are playing out certain patterns you can say, well, I forgive you, but it's like this, it's this play of energy of egos that like is kind of, kind of just has a whole bunch of story tied to it. So the deeper level of forgiveness is realizing there's really nothing to forgive because what you think you need to forgive is really just looking at the meaning, but looking at that it was unconsciousness that did it, not them that did it. And I realized that the person that this happened with me earlier in the year it wasn't, it, it was a deeper core thing than just their I am presence.
It wasn't them in their brilliance. It was them in a certain level of response and unconsciousness. It makes it and it helps it become a lot easier. Now, the, the story was something that I had to learn to shed because I was, for, for months, I was bitter about the situation. There was a lot of anger. I would wake up in the middle of the night kind of like expressing lots of anger. Um, it had to come out of my body. And I could have looked and said, oh, this comes from this experience. But really, I think it, I, I believe that it came from even earlier than that. Childhood, feeling abandoned as a kid with the things that happened with my ex-stepmom and where it was kind of allowed to happen in certain ways and not feeling protected, there's a feeling there of abandonment, a feeling of like not being good enough, a feeling there that I had to like feel into and even forgive them. This isn't about forgiving what happened. It's about even, even deeper core things that it helped me become aware of. So in a way, when you're talking about trust and you say, I can't trust, there's a belief there that says, I can't trust. And on the other side of that trust is some form of blame on somebody else, maybe mom, maybe dad. And the blame is what's keeping that energy active. And on the other side of this is forgiveness. But really at the deeper core, there's really nothing to forgive because it was an expression of unconsciousness. Now that you are aware, you then can have trust in yourself and that you have a higher level of awareness now. And that you can let the divine masculine or divine feminine be something higher than just people. It can be an energy. You could find more connection in Mother Earth if you didn't have that deep of a connection or that much trust with the feminine. If it's with the masculine, you can feel stillness to the space, to God, to source energy, to whatever you believe in. And as you feel connected to that, and as you focus on that relationship, it's higher than just the human perspective. Because remember, the humans can get caught up in the unconsciousness. It helps you to begin to heal that trust and to realize that you have within you the connection to Mother Earth, the connection to God. And as you focus on that connection, it allows that energy to smooth out within you and it allows you to then trust more. Because it does take courage to trust. It takes courage to put yourself out there. It takes courage to lean into the unknown. But, and the more you become aware of these patterns, the more you're really able to heal. So realize that a lot of this may just be a stemmed energy from a past meaning of something that happened that's just been on autopilot. And a very powerful way to transform this is to begin to question those thoughts. Look at like the work of Byron Katie, for example. Question those thoughts. Is it true? You look at the, the thought, I can't trust people. Is it true? Yes, it's true. Second question, can I absolutely know that it's true? Well, I guess I can't know exactly what other people's intentions are at all times. I guess uh, I can look, you know, you start to see it from a different perspective. And then the question, the third question is, how do I respond when I believe that thought? Oh, when I believe that, that thought, I hold my energy in, I'm fearful of some of the people that might be being brought into my life. I tend to then act differently, which then maybe has me attract people that I can't trust. Um, I'm a little bit too guarded. I got my guard up all the time. And then you'd see that and you go, wow. That, that's a powerful thing that happens too, is you then separate yourself from the actual thought. You think the thought is, and the belief is, I can't trust. This is built into reality. This is the way reality works. But then you see, how do I believe when I believe, how do I feel when I think that thought or when I believe that thought? And you realize, wait, when I believe that thought, this is how I react. You then take yourself out of the situation and see it from a different point of view. And who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without that belief that I can't trust? You might be more free. You might be more loose. You might be less guarded. You might be more open-hearted. You might feel more certain about yourself. Maybe you feel more connected to Mother Earth or God. Then you start to feel into this greater energy field of you where you can trust. And she has something else called the turnaround. Turnaround is where you turn around and you, you really, you're able to kind of look at it from the opposite point of view. So for example, if it's like someone betrayed me, 
the turnaround to that is I betrayed them or I betrayed myself. So if it's I can't trust other people, it's, oh, I can't trust myself. You realize that that's what's been holding back. That's what's been keeping that energy back. So then you could focus on forgiving yourself. And you can focus on realizing that this larger aspect of you that does trust, it is an option. And you can begin to, as you let go and you begin to forgive, you begin to open up your heart to a completely new level. You begin to open up, you begin to trust yourself, and begin to feel like a completely new version of you. Now, if you want to learn more about vibration and how to trust the universe in a very powerful way, there's a quiz that you can take called whatsmyvibration.com. I'll go ahead and link it below. And you calibrate your vibe. You see what level you're at, and it shows you how to get to the higher level of consciousness through a meditation that will help you to do that. So if you want to raise your vibe, check that out. Also, if you want a video that's going to help you go deeper on trusting the universe, check this video out right here. I used to feel like I had to do everything, like... If things weren't happening the way I wanted them to, I would try to control them. I would try to force them. I would feel a ton of resistance. And then people would say things like, hey, bro, just trust the universe. <laughs> and I'd be like, what are you talking about, man?